What the fuck is up? Welcome back. My name is Noah Hills. You can catch me on Twitter at no more parties. And today's video is about undrafted free agent rookie running backs. We know a couple things about these guys. Number one, we know that they very, very rarely hit. And number two, we know that sometimes when they hit, it can make a big difference for your fantasy team. Austin Eckler, James Robinson, CJ Anderson. These guys are worth checking out, worth diving into to see if we can parse through the big mess of guys that will never hit to find the guys that have the best chance of hitting. So let's get into it. I did a bunch of research on UDFA running backs in this last week, and between 2013 and 2019, there were 265 running backs who went undrafted and then signed with NFL teams following the draft. Not much data is available pre-2013, and UDFA running back contracts are three years long, so I only went back to 2019 because those guys are the ones, um, the latest guys who've had an opportunity to like play out their rookie contract, so... 2013 to 2019, 265 guys. So what do we do with that? How many of these guys ever do anything? How many of them completely flame out? Let's break it down. How many of these guys scored at least a single PPR fantasy point through their rookie contract, through three seasons? Just one point. These are guys like Troy Main Pope, Fitzgerald Toussaint, Rock Thomas, Divino Zigbo, just like guys who make a team might see the field sometimes. 87 out of 265 of them scored at least one point through three years. That's 32.8%. So less than a third of UDFA running backs will ever score a fantasy point. That's not very good. Okay, how many of these guys are going to score at least 50 fantasy points within three years? These are guys like Dario Gunbawale, Patrick Laird, Mike Boone, 34 out of 265. That's 12.8%. Not good. How many of them will score at least 100 fantasy points within three years? These are guys that like we at least start to become interested in. J.D. McKissick falls in this category. Dearness Johnson, Corey Clement, 23 out of 265, less than 10%, 8.7% will score at least 100 fantasy points. 200 plus fantasy points. These are guys that we might legitimately put in our fantasy lineup at some point. Damien Williams, Thomas Rawls, Peyton Barber, 13 out of 265, 4.9%, less than 1 20th of undrafted running backs will give you at least Thomas Rawls level production. 300 plus fantasy points. These are guys like Gus Edwards, CJ Anderson, Matt Breida, Jalen Richard, guys who are going to like stick around in your team for a couple years, be at least useful. Seven out of 265. Not good. 2.6%. What about 400 fantasy points? Only three guys, 1.1% of 265. That's Isaiah Crowell and Philip Lindsay. And the next guy who is the only UDFA between 2013 and 2019 to score at least 500 fantasy points within his first three years. That's Austin Eckler, 0. 0.4% of undrafted running backs. So what do we do with this? What do we do with this information? We know that very few undrafted running backs hit. Is there any signal in any of this to show us like which guys might hit? Great question. The answer is yes. And what we're looking for is guaranteed money. As part of these contracts, some of these guys get guaranteed money. Some of them do not. Some of them get more guaranteed money than others. And we can, you know, there's a little bit of signal in looking at what kind of guaranteed money these players get. Out of those 265 undrafted running backs, 111 of them got guaranteed money as part of their rookie deals. That's 41.9% of them. So not even half of them get guaranteed money. But the totality, the, the 265 running backs as a collective in their first three contracts, scored 7,359 fantasy points. 7,359 fantasy points scored by 265 players. But those 111 undrafted running backs, who are the guys who got guaranteed money, 42% of the whole population, scored 5,340 of those fantasy points. That's 72.6%. So 42% of the players are scoring nearly three quarters of the fantasy points. That's a pretty good signal. And if we just look at like guaranteed money versus no guaranteed money, how like are these guys to score fantasy points at all? Guys who got no guaranteed money as part of their rookie deals scored fantasy points 23.4% of the time. Guys who did get guaranteed money as part of their rookie deals scored fantasy points 45.9% of the time. So just in looking at guaranteed versus not guaranteed, we double our hit rate in looking for guys who are ever going to score a fantasy point, ever going to make a team and see the field. You're also, it's not just straight up like fantasy points are no, guaranteed money are no. It's, it's not just straight up. You're more likely to find a C.J. Anderson level producer among undrafted running backs with guaranteed money. So you're more likely to find a dude who like is a legitimate starter on your fantasy team from undrafted free agents with guaranteed money than you are to find a Zach Zenner level guy who just like gets on the field every once in a while, makes a team among undrafted running backs without guaranteed money. So 
Not only is it you're more likely to find a guy who will score a single fantasy point than not, you're more likely to find a legitimate starter among undrafted running backs with guaranteed money than you are to find just like a bottom of the roster guy among undrafted running backs without guaranteed money. So that's pretty important. So what we see here is that undrafted running backs as a whole are a terrible bet. Less than a third of them will ever score a single fantasy point. Less than a tenth of them will give you Corey Clement level fantasy production. But we can improve our hit rate dramatically by looking at guaranteed money. And we can even further improve our hit rate by breaking it down further. So the way I kind of looked at this guaranteed money data is because the salary cap has risen so much between 2013 and 2019 or 2013 and now, it's not very fair to just compare like how much guaranteed money did guy X in 2021 get versus how much guaranteed money did guy Z get in 2014. Like both of them could have got 50,000 guaranteed, but those are not equivalent amounts of money given the salary cap is so different in each year. So I looked at guaranteed money as a percent of the salary cap and I'm not some salary cap expert. Like I don't, I don't even know if guaranteed money is part of a guy's cap hit, but that's not really the point. It's just like how much money do teams have to spend and how much are they handing out to guys in guaranteed money as a percent of what they're allowed to spend. So if we look at guaranteed money as a percentage of the cap and we find the median amount, so not an average, but because it gets thrown off by the really high guys, but the median amount or less, that's one category. So guys who got guaranteed money, but like on the lower half of guaranteed money. And then we look at guys who got greater than the median. So the top half of guaranteed money. And then if we break that one down further to the guys that just got the top 20% of guaranteed money. So we got three groups. We got median or less guaranteed money. We got greater than median guaranteed money. And we got top 20% guaranteed money. And if we just look at the 200 point hit rate, and if you remember, that's guys like Thomas Rawls, Damian Williams, Peyton Barber, base level fantasy roster guys who might see you know, some some starts on your dynasty team at some point. So that's our hit rate. Out of undrafted running backs who got less than the median guaranteed money, so they got guaranteed money, but less than the median, there were 59 of them, two of them scored 200 fantasy points. That's 3.4%. If you look at guys who got greater than the median guaranteed money, there were 52 of them, eight of those guys scored 200 fantasy points. That's 15.4%. So we've nearly 5 x our hit rate just by like drawing a line in the sand in the middle of guaranteed money and looking at guys above and below. Like we 5 x our hit rate just by doing that. And then if you look at guys in the top 20% of guaranteed money, there were 21 of them. Four of those guys hit 200 points. That's 19%. So nearly one fifth of those guys will score 200 fantasy points. And then for a second, if we look at guys that didn't get guaranteed money, there were 154 of them. Only three of them scored 200 fantasy points, which is 1.9%. So incredibly low. We 10x our hit rate by looking at like guys without guaranteed money to guys in the top 20%. We 5x by looking at less than median guaranteed money, more than median guaranteed money. So guaranteed money absolutely matters here. And if we like, if we want to bump up our threshold, like we want somebody better than Peyton Barber, better than Damian Williams, bump up the threshold to 300, 400. The hit rates get messy the further we like constrain the thresholds just because the samples get smaller. But there have been seven guys out of undrafted free agent running backs since 2013 who scored at least 300 fantasy points within three years. Seven of them. Five of those guys got guaranteed money. Four out of those five got greater than the median amount of guaranteed money. And that doesn't even count James Robinson, who got guaranteed money, greater than median guaranteed money, and has scored 428 points through two seasons, which is more than all but Isaiah Crowell, Philip Lindsay, and Austin Eckler in three seasons. So James Robinson might be the best UDFA in the last 10 years. By the way, Philip Lindsay, Isaiah Crowell, and Austin Eckler all got guaranteed money as well. But that this all doesn't even count James Robinson because he came into the league too late to like fit the time frame of, of the data that I'm looking at, but it's clear that guaranteed money matters no matter like which threshold you're looking at here, which brings us to the 2022 rookie class. What does that mean for this class? And just as like a quick aside, I've noticed that undrafted free agent running backs are represent not, not just are getting more guaranteed money, but the guaranteed money that they're getting is representing a bigger percentage of the cap now than it has in the past. If you look at the top 10 in percent of in guaranteed money as percent of the cap. So basically the top 10 guaranteed money getters from the last 10 years, four out of the 10 Actually, five out of the 10, five out of the 10 are from 2022 and two thirds of guaranteed money contracts in 2022 fall in the like top 20%, like the elite category, which is crazy. Like obviously it represents the top 20% and 66% of guys this season are getting it. That's kind of wild. Contrasted with only 10 out of 31 undrafted free agent running backs got guaranteed money this year. So that's right around a third of guys compared to the normal 42%. So 
We have fewer players this season getting guaranteed money than normal, but the guys who are getting guaranteed money are getting a lot of it relative to what guys in the past have gotten. And so, you know, I don't really know what that means. Um, My theory is that like the devaluation of running backs in the draft in general, like fewer running backs are getting drafted, um, running backs in general getting drafted later and later as we, as we, you know, move along with time here. And so my theory is that that pushes down guys who maybe in 2015 would have been like fifth, sixth, seventh round picks. Maybe those guys are now going undrafted and getting a lot of guaranteed money, whereas like the normal undrafted free agents who would have gone undrafted in 2016 or 2022 are now the undrafted free agents who are not getting guaranteed money. And so I don't know if that's true. We'll probably kind of have to see over the next couple of years, like how that shakes out. But that's my theory. Um, but for the 2022 class, there are 10 guys who got guaranteed money this year. As of now, at least, um, the, the data source I'm using is Spotrack, which is a really good source for like contract data. As details about contracts trickle in, some guys that look like they're not getting guaranteed money, um, we may see reports that, you know, come out just like with their contract details. But for the most part, I think this is these guys are the 10 who are getting guaranteed money. It's We're far enough from the draft at this point that we probably have contract details for everybody. All that being said, 10 guys. Ronnie Rivers got 9,000 guaranteed from the Cardinals. Jalen Warren got 12,000 guaranteed from Pittsburgh. Raheem Blackshear got 15,000 guaranteed from Buffalo. CJ Verdell got 25,000 guaranteed from the Colts. Tyreek McAllister, who I had never heard of prior to doing this research, got 35,000 guaranteed from Denver. And then there's a huge tier jump, huge tier. Greg Bell and Devontae Price both got 100,000 guaranteed from the Lions and the Colts, respectively. Jay Sean Corbin got 115,000 guaranteed from the Giants. And then another huge tier jump. Abram Smith got 222,000 from the Saints. And Kennedy Brooks, number one guy in this class, got 240,000 from the Eagles, guaranteed. There have been 11 guys since 2013 to get at least 100,000 guaranteed as part of an undrafted rookie contract for running backs. Five of those guys are in this class. That's Greg Bell, Devontae Price, Jay Sean Corbin, Abram Smith, and Kennedy Brooks. The fourth most since 2013 in guaranteed money to undrafted free agent running backs is Jarrett Patterson at 115,000 to Washington last year. Jay Sean Corbin ties him in that category this year, but Abram Smith and Kennedy Brooks got more than 100,000 guaranteed more than that. They're first and third since 2013 in raw guaranteed money, and they're second and third since 2013 in guaranteed money as percentage of the cap behind only one dude, Stephen Houston, who got 225,000 guaranteed from New England when the cap was only 113 million back in 2014. The cap is now 208 million. So that contract that Stephen Houston got is like a massive outlier here. But basically, I think this tells us that like, despite going undrafted, Abram Smith, Kennedy Brooks are decent bets to provide like legitimate fantasy utility given A, heavy investment from their teams. B, they're actually good players. Like both of them were like efficient quality two down runners in college. And three, they have, they're on exploitable depth charts. They're on teams with exploitable death charts. Kennedy Brooks is on a team with the Eagles who's had like the Jay Ajayi, Jordan Howard, LeGarrette Blunt type players playing this two down pounder role on that team. And outside of Kennedy Brooks, they don't have anybody else who plays that role on the Eagles right now. They got Miles Sanders, who's kind of like a jack of all trades, you know, blah player. Um, They've got Boston Scott, you know, Jason Huntley, Kenny Gainwell. They got a bunch of like satellite back types, basically, plus Kennedy Brooks. So I think he's got a good chance to like actually make an impact this year. Um, And then Abram Smith is on the Saints where they got like three Jags. Then they got Mark Ingram, who's aging, might not be effective anymore. And they got Alvin Kamara, who could be suspended for two games, six games. Who knows? Abram Smith could have a legitimate like week one role on this team. And then beyond them, we've got Jay Sean Corbin, Devontae Price, Greg Bell are good options, just like given the investment their team's made in them. I don't think these guys are particularly good players. I wasn't in on them like pre-draft, but they got investment from their teams as undrafted running backs. And then beyond them on that like next tier, Jalen Warren is my favorite of the other like guys who got guaranteed money. He was a legitimately good player at Oklahoma State last year. He was productive at like the JUCO level. Um, He was productive at Utah State. And he's on on a depth chart in Pittsburgh that has like Najee Harris at the top and then nobody like they have Anthony McFarland they have Benny Snell uh these guys just aren't good Jalen Warren could be the number two back like that would not surprise me and then there's 21 guys who did not get guaranteed money in this class and what this means for them is they have a tough road ahead of them historical data says only five of them will ever score a single fantasy point and historical data says that we'd be lucky to even see one of them score even 100 fantasy points I'm a little bit more optimistic about this group than I would be an, an equivalent group from like 2017 given the like historically unique number of guys that didn't get guaranteed money in this in this kind of offseason cycle and the historically unique amount given to those guys that did get money so like 
This group is fairly unique given historical data. It might be evidence in the, a shift in the way that teams handle UDFA running backs. Like I, I spoke to this a little bit earlier. We don't know, but I'm a little bit more optimistic about these guys just given that like we don't know how that all shakes out yet. But historical data says that only five of them will ever score a single fantasy point. The five I'd pick for that are Zaquandre White with the Dolphins, Mateo Durant in Pittsburgh, Bryant Kobach, um, with Minnesota, Zonovan Knight with the Jets, and Julius Chestnut with the Tennessee Titans. And if one of these guys was ever going to score 100 fantasy points, be like a legitimately useful fantasy contributor, I'm taking shots on Julius Chestnut. He was really good in college. You know, this is a fairly exploitable depth chart as well. Derrick Henry's at the top, obviously. He's getting older. He was hurt last year. He was relatively ineffective on a per-touch basis last year. Beyond him, it's like Dontrell Hilliard. Um, Hassan Haskins is here. Julius Chestnut could navigate this depth chart to the number two role. I don't know that I'd predict that, but that's the guy I'd be taking shots on out of undrafted running backs who did not get guaranteed money. That's all I got. Uh, thanks for sticking around. Uh, I think the casuals probably skip this one. Undrafted running backs. Who wants to watch that? But, you know, I think this is useful information. Um, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment, you know? And catch me on my next video. Have a great week. Deuces.